Sarah likes both chocolate and vanilla ice cream. And let's have chocolate on the x-axis. Now, she's always willing to trade one scoop of chocolate for two scoops of vanilla. And we know that the price of a scoop of chocolate is three times as expensive as vanilla. Let's describe Sarah's optimal bundle. Well, with the information that she's willing to trade one scoop of chocolate for two scoops of vanilla, we can deduce her marginal rate of substitution. Now, chocolate is on the x-axis, so that means the MRS is C comma V. And that's the rate she's willing to give up vanilla to get one more scoop of chocolate. So, using the information where one scoop of chocolate is two scoops of vanilla, we just flip it and say she's willing to give up two vanilla for one more chocolate. Or her marginal rate of substitution is two. This is also going to be the slope of her indifference curve if we put a negative on it. So, her indifference curves all have a slope of negative two. Since the slope is constant, we know the indifference curves are straight lines. Now this means chocolate and vanilla are substitutes for Sarah. Substitutes are always going to have a straight line, constant slope of the indifference curve. Now the price of a scoop of chocolate is three times that of vanilla. From this information, we can deduce the market's rate of substitution. That is the slope of the budget line. So with chocolate on the x-axis, the slope of the budget line is the negative of the price of chocolate divided by the price of vanilla. And if chocolate is three times as expensive as vanilla, the slope of the budget line is a negative three. So both the budget line and the indifference curves are straight lines. This should tip you off to the fact that we're going to have a corner solution. There'll never be a tangency if both lines are straight. Now let's compare the slope of the indifference curve with the slope of the budget line. If the indifference curve is steeper, we're going to have an X corner solution. And if the indifference curve is flatter, we're going to have a Y corner solution. Well, we've got 2 versus 3 in negative, of course, and 2 is less than 3, so the indifference curve is flatter than the budget line. This tells us we're going to have a y-axis corner solution. So here we've got chocolate and vanilla plotted on our axis. I'm going to draw a generic budget line, and it has a slope of negative 3, and I'm going to draw a generic indifference curve with a slope of negative 2. Now, there's going to be a whole range of indifference curves, right? One with lower utility and increasing as they go out. Well, we know we're going to be trying to get on the highest indifference curve we can, given our budget. And we know that since the indifference curve is flatter than the budget line, we're going to have a y-axis corner solution. That's going to be right here. So our corner solution tells us Sarah's bundle is going to have all vanilla ice cream and no chocolate ice cream.